Well, this is just a vibey place to um, <laughs> have a hang. You know? <laughs> uh, Can we find a stool? I have a gun for not. I. There's so much to talk about in the, in the realm of worship and worship leading, and, and there's so much of it that's like, uh, there's so much practical stuff um, involved in it, like just learning basic music skills and how to lead a band and, and how to lead people. Um, honestly, you can write books and books and books and books on it, and people have, and I'm sure you guys, um, some of you guys may be just exploring this, some of you guys may have led churches and been worship pastors and I have no idea where all your journeys are so um, I don't mean um, I'm just going to share like yeah. my heart for, for stuff and then nice. um, and then let you guys ask maybe stuff that you want to know um, and go from there uh, I've been leading worship since I was about 13 years old um, which so like 20, it's getting up there, guys. It's getting up there. <laughs> or, uh, I haven't even done math, but it's a long time. Um, at least someone's good at math. I'm 39. And 30, 26 years. 26 years. Yeah. Woo! So um, my first experience was with YWAM, um, I, uh, which was great. That was actually my first encounter with um, contemporary. Contemporary. Uh, whatever you would call it, modern. Yeah, sure, I can see. Give you hang it then. Maybe get a music here. I'll go grab a music. Hey, Let there be light. Hey, I'm seeing that today. Yes. Cool. Yeah, girl, that's a voice. Um. So yeah, I, you know, I've been doing it a long time, lots of journeys, lots of, you know, different things. Most of um, my early leading was just small groups, um, kinship, uh, home group, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I honestly think that's the best training grounds. Um, um, I didn't, I, I led most of it just an acoustic guitar. Um, and before that, I, I did most of my leading just with myself. And, and I had a few moments um, um, leading even before I, um, hit puberty, which was great. <laughs> was real great. No, you guys are great. I don't need any of this. But you're so kind. So kind. Ground. Is there a mas foot massager? I can <laughs> <laughs> you want your coffee? Uh, yeah, coffee's <laughs> great. Too. Just because you're the first. Coffee really helps. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. It's so, yeah. be yeah. minute 30. Uh, I don't know. This is so risky. You never know those music stands that just oh, yeah. decide yeah. to just go, you know? We'll just watch. We'll but, um, <laughs> so um, then in a church for 15 years, kind of grew up there um, and began to lead worship there, um, youth, ministry, junior high, high school, young adults a little bit, played air guitar for a lot of sets, you know, because that's where we started in worship. That's what you were allowed to do. <laughs> And, um, and then graduated to leading a song or two, and then just kind of spun out a little bit on the whole church thing, got a little bitter. I mean, just classic 18-year-old stuff, and um, didn't make the transition from high school to big church, you know, very well, so um, uh, madly in love with a girl for um, a couple of years, and then she dated my youth pastor right, right as we graduated high school which helped with the bitterness towards the church <laughs> whatsoever. I mean, that was a deep betrayal. So, um, um, and then I, I went through this season where I, I, I was not interested in doing worship at all. I couldn't connect with worship. I just wanted to um, kind of sing what was what was in my heart. And, and what was in my heart wasn't pretty. And it wasn't, um, uh, wasn't it was a lot of just heartbrokenness. And, um, and that coupled with a massive, strong desire to not have a normal life, to do something of significance, to actually do something in alignment with my passion, kind of led to pursuing rock and roll, mainstream music, and started a band, did that whole thing. Um, learned a lot about leading a band, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know that thing that Paul Manwaring says that God never wastes a season? Yeah. Yeah. He definitely didn't waste that one. I mean, he just learned so much about just leading people, lear you know, learning about music. Um, so that I had that band for like five years, and we were in Southern California, so we tried to do all the 
all the clubs in Hollywood and so on and so forth. And um, it was back in the day where if, you know it was the mindset that if you could just get a record contract, you were going to be famous, kind, kind of a deal. So and you just kind of kept putting quarters in a slot and just hoping that one of those <laughs> one of those days um, the right air and air guy would be there and, and you'd make it big, kind of a thing. And um, we. It, it had moments where it felt like, man, this could break open, and then, you know, like like all, like all like I would say 99% of bands in that scenario, it just kind of faded into nothing. Actually, it was, I, if, if the honest telling of the story is that I ended it very intentionally um, because I was at a war with God over it, and um, and anyway, I won't go into the whole my whole testimony, but, um, but it brought me back to worship, essentially, but it was a different kind of coming back to worship. It, it, coming back to worship had nothing to do with me fulfilling any personal dream or doing anything. It was it was death to all my dreams, um, and it was um, it wasn't a fun season. Um, it was a fully surrendered season um, where where I, I was tired of fighting with the Lord, and I'd had more than a few people. My dad being one in particular. It wasn't a fun conversation with my dad though, but he just said, you know, there's a call in your life, and you're running 90 miles an hour down a road that you just don't know where. You don't know that that's him, and, and I couldn't disagree with that. So I went on a journey to find out what it really looked like to live a surrendered life. And, so, and part of that journey was coming back to worship um, and leading for junior hires, which is really, really, um, it's a highlight, you know, for all worship leaders. And, uh, and yeah, they're just um, singing and leading, and they're, you know, drinking soda and spilling popcorn or whatever else they had and I was just like, well, this is an all-time low for me, you know. I am. And um, but the Lord began to do something in my heart over the course of basically a year, and um, and worship was pure again. Wow. It was um, it wasn't attached to any desire to become anything. I literally laid music down, and um, and for the first time, I began to write songs that I believe in, and mm -hmm. songs that I wasn't trying to write a worship song. I was actually just trying to. Communicate. If there's one thing I learned in that whole season of playing um, and not trying to write a worship song, not trying to write anything, but what my heart was feeling is, I, you know, you learn honesty, which is a hard thing. It's a hard thing to do when you're writing corporate worship songs because there's so many voices, uh, you know. Um, and I, I didn't have any of those voices um, when I first began to write. I just, I just began to pen my heart, and and um, that was really beautiful. It was super sweet, and I began to play some of the songs for the junior hires. And, and I'm like, oh, they like them. This is, this is great. Um, and then it just kind of grew from there. And, and I, I actually pastored. I, I, it was not a long, it was, it was actually a long season where I, I didn't really go after music. I pastored junior Irish for about six years. Um, but in that time, I never stopped writing. And I wrote a record, basically. And, they, um, and um, one of the tunes um, was a tune called Sweetly Broken, which marked a very like a massive course correction um, you know in my life and mm -hmm. and the label I was with they liked the song and they said hey we're gonna pitch it to radio and I said great do whatever you want I was not a fan of Christian radio so it didn't really matter to me it wasn't like a significant thing but they did it and and shock of all shocks it it made impact and it got picked up by Kayla and all the all the stations and it got it became like a, a, a Christian music hit, which was yeah. really, which was really ironic for me. And um, and all of a sudden, I was getting all these invites to festivals and all these things that I had no grid for. Um, and I would just try and lead them like I would lead a church, and realize that that was not very, that's not a very successful way to lead a festival. It doesn't really work. Um, and um, and it was that where we just basically jumped off a massive cliff, decided to just after music I said I don't know why this door is open but we're gonna check it out kind of a deal and um, after that it felt like two years of constantly failing and um, because I'm leading for a group that only really understood a more performance oriented mm -hmm. style and I was just a worship leader in a church that I didn't realize how much of a culture of worship the vineyard yeah. church had right. until you go where there's right. virtually no culture of worship and you just expect that if you close your eyes and you sing to Jesus, that everyone else will too. And they don't. They just stare at you. And, um, <laughs> and so it was just like, oh, okay. Um, that was just a rude awakening. And um, two brutal years um, where my whole life we had moved away from our home church. We were living out in the middle of nowhere. 
other long story, can't go into it. Um, we were going to plant a church, never planted a church. Um, and um, and all my, it was a weird season where all my finances were tied up in doing music, and that wasn't going very well. And you know, all the stresses and the compromises internally that I felt like I went through to try and actually become more of a, a performance-oriented worship leader, where you actually learn how to do things. You go to festivals and... And, um, and I was pretty cynical too, so um, <laughs> particularly of all things, you know, Christian music oriented. So, um, so I'd go to these festivals and I'd watch people lead and they're like, everybody get your hands in the air. And I'm just like, who does that? And I'm like, oh, 10,000 people do that. That's, that's who does that, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, can I ever do that? I don't know if I could ever do that kind of thing. And then I would try um, to incorporate that and it was just kind of like, wearing somebody else's armor and, and it was yeah. just a miserable experience and yeah. and it wasn't going anywhere it wasn't going very well for, for anybody involved and it was just two years of being broken down and and it was probably one of the two most precious years of my life because yeah. I think at the end of that two years I had absolute clarity mm -hmm. and that was I was not a performer I was not a I was not even called to be a hybrid um, mm -hmm. kind of person who, who can do a little bit of performing and a little bit you know it's like yep. I was like, no, I'm, I am just, yeah. I am for worship, and I, I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for a different, yes, Lord. yeah, that's what I'm looking for, right there. Um, 